đây mô thái đây Ở đây mô thái đây Hello. So, um, the clips that I showed you earlier uh, at the beginning of this video, um, those were from the uh, a tiny excursion that my parents and I took, um, I think last week, uh, to my childhood town um, called Simangang. Uh, now it is called Simangang, but uh, at the time when I was when I was there when I was a kid, uh, it was called Sri Aman. And some people still call that Tan Sri Aman these days. Um, and even at that time, some people called it Simangang. So it's kind of like Sri, Sri Aman slash Simangang. But I think officially now it's called Simangang. Anyway, um, yeah, those clips were from that uh, small excursion. And I just sort of took some um, uh, videos of the river, the Lopa River that, um, that runs through that town. Um, yeah, it actually has been like close to 20 years since I last left that town and um, we made some visits to that town uh, once in a while um, and I think I visited last year as well but it, it always felt really fascinating to see how that town changed like after um, you know after so much time has passed um, and you know it just felt good because uh, that's where I grew up and um, yeah it was it was fun anyway a little bit about that river um, that town is kind of famous for the um, um, for the crocodiles <laughs> and apparently that river is sort of well known as a crocodile infested river um, but at that time I didn't spot any crocodile when I was um, when I was living in that town um, I wouldn't say I spotted any crocodile. I mean, there was probably one time in which I noticed something floating, um, you know, in the waters, but it could be just a log. But then again, crocodiles could resemble logs when they are floating in water, but who knows? <laughs> and another interesting tidbit that I found online was that apparently writer um, William Somerset Moam um, apparently almost died in that river once upon a time so um, that was interesting and apparently that event had I don't know something to do with the tidal bore which is actually another thing that that town is kind of well known for um, it is something that you can see um, happening almost every evening but um, of course not all uh, occurrence of that like um, it's gonna be like the uh, uh, you know the best view it's not going to be like the the tallest wave every day um sometimes it's just you know something really low key um but yeah uh, that town is kind of known for that it has this yearly tidal bore festival um which is which is kind of i would say interesting um and worth visiting if anyone is interested <laughs> Anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah, those are all about um, my town, uh, my childhood town. So welcome or welcome back to my channel and um, let, you know, this is another recent reads, but this time I only have two books to talk about. I actually have the third book that I'm currently reading right now that I actually plan to include um, together with these two books for a uh, you know, a single recent read video, but um, I'm still reading that one right now. So I thought let's just proceed with these two. So um, I have one short story collection and another um, uh, non-fiction a memoir. So let's start with the short story collection. This is Eleven Kinds of Loneliness by Richard Yates. Um, I love this collection. Um, short story collections are usually hit or miss for me um, and they are especially a miss if the stories are just sort of included there um, and they feel random, they don't feel cohesive um, and the stories are um, you know uh, very wildly in terms of quality that's another um, that's another um, 
you know, a minus point for me. Uh, but this short story collection, the quality of the story is consistently awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and you can certainly see the style of the author just um, just feel very consistent in all of the stories. Um, what I really like about Richard Yates' writing is that um, he's uh, first of all the tone uh, the tone that he employs is sort of impersonal. There's a bit of detachment. Um, uh, from the voice of the story's narrator. And therefore, we don't really feel, or at least I didn't feel like um, my uh, conclusions for all of the stories were manipulated. Like, I didn't feel like the narrator is trying to make me think in certain ways for, um, for all of the stories. It didn't try to... Um, uh, it didn't try to mold how I think about the characters or the stories, or any other elements in the uh, in, in in the stories, which um, which is something that I like, because if there is something that I don't like, it would be um, the writing um, making me uh, or 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 intends to um, steer me towards a clear direction, and I can clearly feel that. I'm being pushed towards that, and I and I don't really feel that, uh, don't really like to feel that way when I read something, uh, but this one does not make me feel like that, um, and most of the stories in here, um, they were set in I think, let me think, probably forties, fifties, around that time, um, and this collection was actually first published in 1962. And a lot of the characters, they, they, they were mainly about characters living in America. Um, I think majority of the characters living, uh, living in New York at the time. And all of the stories explore the concept of loneliness in different perspectives and contexts. Um, but what's really interesting is that it doesn't really show loneliness as, um, you know, as, as what it is, but uh, it shows loneliness as a consequence of um, something else. Like uh, quite a bunch of the stories in this book uh, revolves around the tragedy of not being able to live uh, the life that we want to have for ourselves or the life that we envision ourselves to have or the kind of loneliness that is brought upon by our um, our uh, sort of like desire to yearn for something that is that that has already happened but already passed. Um, a lot of the stories in here are related to um, uh, marriage failures or relationship failures uh, brought upon by um, for some things like communication breakdown or um, how the orderedness of life. Um, how something like that could give us the sense of power or control to our life, but because of those absence, we feel powerless. Uh, for example, there, uh, there are stories about characters reminiscing or rather thinking about their days when they were in the army and how that gave them uh, this, this sense of purpose, but then, um, but then once the war is over, they just, they just kind of lose their sense of direction. And that is explored in this in one story called the Barman, um, and quite a bunch of other um, interesting stories as well. Stories set in the classroom. We have we have stories such as um, Fun with a Stranger and also Doctor Jack O' Lantern. Um, just kind of um, examines characters in the environment of a classroom. The characters' dynamics between you know the students and the teachers as well, um, yeah. So quite a lot of um, very interesting perspectives on 
what it means to be kind of lonely. Now, one story that I kind of like, well, actually, I like a lot of them, but one story I kind of like is called A Really Good Jazz Piano, which is, I would say, um, a story that is, um, it feels universal in the sense that it is not particularly tied to a certain era. It is a story about how someone just is kind of um, more like a um, the the archetype of a loser, and how that person sort of derives their sense of um, um, their sense of worth by being in close proximity to a, uh, another person that is supposedly stronger or more powerful. Um, I find it interesting. Um, there are also stories that are um, very much. Uh, tied to that era at that time, especially the, um, uh, how it um, explores the, uh, the experience of TB patients. Two of those stories particular, in particular have, um, or uh, rather involve characters with TB as well, and the kind of loneliness that is brought upon uh, them or their loved ones um, when you know, that illness um, exists in, you know, um, in their family or, or on them. So, yeah, this is a really wonderful story. I, this wonderful collection. I absolutely love this one and I definitely, definitely recommend this to everyone to try. Um, it is the, it is the kind of book that serves pessimism in the way that I enjoy, uh, which is a weird thing to describe. Um, a strange way to describe this book because, you know, pessimism, but um, I, just I just like how this book just makes you feel kind of depressed at, you know, sometimes, but at the same time you also feel safe. <laughs> Um, I didn't feel emotionally manipulated that you know that's the thing so yeah um, those are all my thoughts about lemon kinds of loneliness so moving on to the second book I want to talk about this is the diving bell and the butterfly um, and this book was uh, published in let's see um, 1997, I think. Yeah, it was published in 1997. So this book was originally written in French. It was translated into English by Jeremy Legat. Um, yeah, it's The Diving Bell and The Butterfly by Jean-Dominique Bobby. And <clears throat> this book uh, centers around the author who, um, who had stroke and... Um, as a consequence of that stroke, his body was almost completely paralyzed um, and he could only move very limited um, portions of his body, which includes the left eye that um, he uses to uh, communicate by blinking. And I believe he, uh, he was able to uh, swivel his head a little bit also. Uh, but other than that, he was completely paralyzed and he had to uh, spend so much time um, staying at the hospital and uh, and just another detail is that uh, before he realized that he was paralyzed prior to him um, waking up well basically when, when he had that stroke he got into a coma for some time and then he woke up to the knowledge that he was, he was paralyzed and so you could sort of imagine the kind of circumstance that um, that surrounds the the making of this of this memoir, and that is something that is definitely captured in this book. I had a certain expectation, you know, with that knowledge, I had a certain expectation about this book, and I would say that that expectation was kind of. Um, was kind of uh, challenged in a way um, because when I was reading this book, this book is comprised of um, 
a bunch of short vignettes about the life of uh, this man uh, when he was uh, hospitalized and paralyzed at the hospital. And all of those vignettes are very short, but at the same time, they, they have this kind of liveliness to them. There is this kind of um, uh, movements that, that feels very active. It feels like, despite how um, the, the, the author's body was immobilized, there was something that was very active that was constantly moving in terms of what going what 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 and what went on um in his in his head and that was certainly is what this book is trying to convey i believe and you could definitely see that from the title as well it's you know the diving bell and the butterfly the diving bell uh describes what was happening to him physically but the butterfly part describes what was going on with him mentally so in spite of how, how um, challenging his situation was at the time, not being able to move his body, to, to basically just move around, um, inside, in his mind, he's always just kind of going here and there. He was thinking about this, thinking about that. And all of those things were translated onto the page. And I guess, you, you know, you, I also could... Um, you know, could only just imagine like how difficult it was to to come up with such such a book and to actually sort of write it, write quote unquote, because this book was actually dictated by uh, the author um, through someone who transcribed um, this book uh, through the means of. Um, blinking, as in the author blinked his eyes uh, and so he dictated this book letter by letter. And yeah, you could just kind of imagine how challenging that was. So in that sense, I would say this book is very much interesting. Um, the the expectation that was challenged, the expectation that I had was challenged was actually on how I thought this book was going to be kind of, I don't know, um, going to be like really sad about the whole paralysis thing. But instead it was mostly about um, how his mind was just going around through different memories and through different observations that he had at the time um, when it was uh, immobilized. And it, it didn't really... Um, feel or it didn't evoke any sense of um, uh, uh, of, of, of being stiffened of, or, or of being immobilized everything was just very lively in this book um, that being said I also thought that the, you know, this book kind of left me feel a bit cold there was something that was slightly underwhelming about this book. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think that was just mostly um, through the fact that this book just, just, just was just kind of short. And I mean, honestly, it would be very difficult to dictate a longer book. But I felt that this book also showed um, some very interesting perspective from the author. Anyway, those are my thoughts about the diving bell and the butterfly. So those are the two books that I finished. Um, what am I currently reading? Basically very similar set of books that I had, um, <laughs> that I had been reading before. I am still reading LA Woman by Eve Babbitts. Um, I am still reading Jane Smiley's Moo. I'm still reading The Leopard by um, Giuseppe Tomasi di Lampedusa. And I'm currently in the middle of um, reading. And at this point, I'm focusing on this book. Uh, this is Hell of a Book by Jason Mott. And the reason why I'm focusing on this book is because... I am returning to KL soon and some 
one month ago there was actually a book sale here in Kuching and uh, we went there um, and I got five books and I told my mom that before I return to KL I will I will finish these five books and hell of a book is just one of those five books that I got from from that um, from that book sale and that is why I want to finish this book quick you know, I want to finish this book quickly before I return um, the other four books I've already finished those and you know you would have remembered some of these books I've mentioned them in uh, the past recent reads videos as well um, one of those books was 11 Kinds of Loneliness, <laughs> which I wrap up in this video. Um, there was also Anu's Braised Pork, Frankenstein in Baghdad by Ahmed Sarawi, and also um, Philip Jiang's L. Um, so yeah, I'm now on the final book that I said to my mom that I wanted to finish. Uh, so yeah, that's all for this recent reads. Let me know what you're reading right now. Um, let me know what you think about the books that I just mentioned uh, in this video. Um, let me know how your day has been going. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's my one of my cats. Her name is Gold Cow. And um, but yeah, she, she doesn't really care about, you know, um, making an appearance in this video. She just she's just chilling there anyway um i'll see you again in a different one so until then take care thanks for watching thank you for stopping by and bye